Signal Gasoline. Let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with Signal. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood Signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, Escape to Danger. I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. To Frederick Pontiac, an American citizen caught in Germany by the war, death came slowly and painfully of starvation and torture in the cellar of a Nazi prison camp. But death was not the end for Frederick Pontiac. It was the beginning of a new and bizarre chapter. For he died only a few days too early, and his body was hardly cold before his captor saw the handwriting on the wall, put there by Allied Shell. Yes, the Nazis' hours were numbered, and they all knew. And that was when a plan was hatched in the brain of Commander Ernst von Muller, commandant of the prison, a man high on the list of war criminals. Where is the man, Doctor? In the cellar. He died last night. I think he'll do. I must look at him first. We will have to hurry. The American swine will be here soon. They are storming the hill now. Yeah, yeah. You have the dossier on... uh, What's the man's name, Doctor? Pontiac. Friedrich Pontiac. Yeah, I have it. Friedrich Pontiac. Yeah. Friedrich Pontiac. This one is Friedrich Pontiac. See? Nein, nein. He was an old man. But see, Commander, the bone structure, the hair and eyes. Of course, he is very thin now, and he has aged. But you will see by the dossier he is but 40, your age. And you will see by the photograph in the dossier there is a striking resemblance to yourself. You won't need to change your face, Herr Commandant. Let me see the dossier, Doctor. Here. Thank you. Friedrich Pontiac. Born Zurich, Switzerland, 1905. Attended school in Geneva, 1911 to 1918. Emigrated to America in 1918 with his parents and attended school in New York in 1918 to 1924. Hmm. In 1926, he became a United States citizen. He went to work in his father's drugstore until 1928. When his father died and the business was sold from 1928 to 1932, he did various odd jobs. In 1933, he entered Germany. Mm-hmm. He spoke German well. Mm-hmm, that's good. In English with an accent. Good. The fatherland made use of him in the chemical factory in Berlin... But his work was unsatisfactory. He drank too much. Hmm. And had fits of melancholia. This became worse until in 1941, it was of no further use to us. And so, was sentenced for inefficiency to hard labor here at this camp. Excellent, Herr Doctor, excellent. I think it will work. I will have to attend to the fingerprints, Herr Commandant. <coughs> it uh, may be rather painful for you. I understand, Herr Doctor. It does not matter. From now on, I shall be Frederick Pontiac, American citizen. Question. How many times do you have to see a thing before you remember it? Here's an interesting test for you Whistler fans to check up on your alertness and memory. Time and again, probably right in your own neighborhood, you've seen and read the big trademark that identifies signal gasoline dealers who bring you the Whistler. But test yourself. 
Can you remember that trademark well enough to describe it now? Well, think a moment. Do you visualize a big black circle sign with yellow letters spelling signal gasoline? And in the center, a traffic signal reading go, reminding you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. That yellow and black circle sign is a mighty good sign to keep in mind these days because with gasoline mileage still an important factor in today's driving, signal go farther gasoline offers your best way to get most miles per ration coupon. So next time you invest one of your gas stamps, try signal gasoline. Prove in your own car what more and more wise Western drivers are discovering, that you do go farther with signal gasoline. And now... Back to the Whistler. And so Frederick Pontiac, dead in a Nazi prison, is born again. And Commander Ernst von Muller, Nazi war criminal, is no more. He commands a last desperate defense of the prison, just long enough for the mutilation of his fingerprints. It's a painful operation, but it's worth it, Von Muller, or should I say Pontiac, because now, when the Americans arrive and find you lying among all your dead companions, your mutilated fingers make the picture all the more convincing. And in an almost unbelievably short time, you're standing on the dock in New York. Everything's been perfect so far. No one suspected you. They hardly even questioned you back in Germany. If you can just get through the customs men. Frederick Pontiac? Yes, sir. I'm Frederick Pontiac. Relax. There's no need to click your heels here. You're in America now. Back home. Hmm. Silly of me. Forgive me. It's been a long time. You look very pale. What's the matter? Are you frightened? Sea voyages disagree with me. I think it's perhaps seasickness. Take it easy. We all know how much you've been through. We want to make things as easy as possible for you. Thank you. Uh, why do you want me? It's only that your passport has expired. You'll have to fill out this form. I see you can't. Your hands are injured. Very well, just answer the questions. I'll write them in. Frederick Pontiac, age? Frederick Pontiac, born 1905, May 16th. Attended school in Switzerland, 1911 to 1918. Came to America... Oh, wait a 19... minute. One at a time. First, where were you born? Zurich, 1905, May 16. Your father's name, nationality? Um, Franklin Pontiac, American. Mother's name and nationality, maiden name? Sarah um, Smith, Swiss. Where'd you attend school? Geneva and New York. The names of the schools and how many years in high school and what grades, please? What grades? I don't remember now. You will have to excuse me. I have a se severe migraine headache. All right, then. You just sign it or just make a mark. It'll be all right. Just sign here. Uh, yeah. That's it. Thank you. Take it and best of luck to you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, just a minute. Where's your luggage? You've got to have it inspected for the customs. I don't have any. Just the clothes and my bag. Oh, all right. I'll fill out your papers. Make a cross here where it says to sign. Yes, thank you very much. That's nothing. Glad to help. Good luck to you. Thank you. Pardon me, sir. Aren't you Frederick Pontiac? Oh, yes. My name is Mitchell, Mr. Pontiac. How do you do? Glad to meet you, uh, at last. Yes? Uh, I'm sorry to have to give you this after all you've been through, but uh, can't be helped. What is it? I, I can't open it. Oh, well, um, uh, suppose we step over here a moment? Um, my hands. It's a court order, Mr. Pontiac. I'm Mrs. Pontiac's lawyer. When you deserted her in 1933, she got a divorce. You owe $12,000 back alimony to my client. Like I say, I'm sorry about greeting you back home with this, but <laughs> that's my business. $12,000? That's impossible for me to pay. Oh, come, come, Mr. Pontiac. Don't let's have trouble. We've been nice about this. We never slapped a lien on your bank like Mrs. Pontiac wrote you we had. We want to do things right by you. So, uh, what do you say? We get in my car and run over to the bank. Get that safe deposit box out, and you pay off like a gentleman. Safe deposit box at my bank? Yes, I know your little secret. You can't fool me, Pontiac. I know about the money you have in the state and county bank on 84th Street. Yes, Mr. Pontiac, I found out about that. Oh, my, my wife told you. <laughs> Shall we say trade secrets and that a little birdie whispered it to me? But you don't have to worry about me. 
No, just so long as I get my fee and the money for my client. Now, what do you say? We run over to 84th Street right now. Very well. For a minute, you thought you were found out. But no, Mitchell thinks you are Pontiac. So you enter the lawyer's long, sleek black sedan and settle back in the soft upholstery. You ought to be happy, Von Muller. This man you have so cunningly changed places with has money in the bank that he kept secret. Isn't that fortunate? Why are you so worried as you drive to 84th Street? Could it be the wife you didn't know about? And as you stand in the magnificent, opulent interior of the bank manager's office, why do you feel the butterflies fluttering in your stomach? And a panicky urge to escape. Good afternoon, gentlemen. This is Mr. Frederick Pontiac, Mr. Crane. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Pontiac? Mr. Pontiac has a safe deposit box here. Been yes. here since 1933. It's been in Europe since that date. Had quite an ordeal. Was in a German concentration camp. How dreadful for you, Mr. Pontiac. I've read about these places. Glad you got out all right. Thank you, Mr. Crane. Now that he's back, Mr. Pontiac would like to open his safe deposit box. Oh, certainly. You have the key, Mr. Pontiac? The key? Oh, no. Uh, they took everything from me. Well, do you remember the number? Yes, the number. Uh, uh, you haven't forgotten the number, have you? I'm trying to remember my memories and what it was since... Oh, uh, of course, of course. Well, I, I can look it up in my file here. Uh, in the meantime, perhaps you'll sign this form? Yes. You see, my hands have been injured, but I'll do the best I can. Oh, yes, I, I see. Um, well, uh, uh, have you some other means of identification? You see, I, I wasn't manager here in 33. I, I suppose I could get Miller over. He, he was manager here in 33. He'd remember you. A uh, remarkable memory that man has. Never forgets a face. Nobody could fool him. Uh, just a formality. I, uh, uh, you have your passport, haven't you, Mr. Pontiac? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, that's enough, isn't it, Mr. Crane? You can check on that. Uh, well, yes, I, I think in this case we can make an exception. Uh, here it is. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yes. Uh, well, uh, you've aged since this photo was taken, haven't you? It's an old photo, <laughs> yes. Well, that seems all in order. I think you can have your deposit box, Mr. Pontiac. It's uh, number 173. Will you step this way, please? Thank you. Here it is. 173. There you are. Let me know when you're finished. Thank you. $150,000. All in $1,000 bills. Uh, suppose I take the 12000 while you have it handy? Very well. Here's 12000 mm -hmm. And the matter of my fee, Mr. Pontiac? How much? Uh, five grand. Five grand? Yeah, five thousand dollars. Uh, I know it's expensive, but I'm a good man. You know, I can keep my mouth shut. Uh, count it yourself. Uh, my hands hurt. Okay. One, two... Three, four, five, and one for luck. Thank you, Mr. Pontiac. Now, uh, can I drive you anywhere? Uh, where are you staying? Uh, thank you, yes. Any good hotel will do. I've had a rather trying day. Well, how about the Continental Plaza? Nice view of the park, swell bar, good restaurant. Yes, yes. Uh, that will do satisfactorily, I'm sure. That has been a very hard day. Ah, it'll be good to rest. Very good. Look, uh, Mr. Pontiac, uh, I'll give you a tip. Yes? Don't stay in town too long. It might be unhealthy for you. Uh, what do you mean, unhealthy? You haven't forgotten Lucky Chandler, have you? Huh? Lucky Chandler? Oh, yes, yes, Chandler. Yeah, Lucky Chandler. Lahef hasn't forgotten. As soon as he hears you're in town, he'll pay you a visit. If you oh, yes, yes, the hip, the hip. Your arrival, it was in the papers this evening. Um, how do you mean, pay me a visit? Uh, unhealthy for me? Uh, Forget it, chum. It's just a hint. You know me. I can keep my mouth shut. I don't want any trouble. Yes, I, I see. But you don't see, do you, Herr von Muller? 
You don't know who these men are, the hip and lucky Chandler. What does Mitchell mean, unhealthy? You don't know, do you? But you're too tired to worry now. So you go to your hotel suite and fall into a fitful sleep. And in the morning? How can that be? Yes? What is it? Good morning, Mr. Pontiac. I was calling to let you know your wife is on her way up to your room. My wife? Yes, sir. Mrs. Pontiac is on her way up. Y yes? Who is it? It's me, Gloria, your ex-wife. Remember me? You can't come in. Oh, Freddie, don't be silly. I only wanted to say hello and take a look at you. Get away. I order you out. I just wanted to say I'm sorry about the Mitchell greeting you with the court order. It wasn't my idea. Out, I say. Get out. I don't want to speak with you. I don't want to see you. Get out. Now, look, Freddie, don't push me. I, I said get to... out. And stay away from me. Well, what's the matter with you? Are you sick? Change. Go away. All right. I'll be back, Freddie. I'm worried about you. I'm luscious to that. Yes, what is it, please? Is that you, Pontiac? Yes. This is Le Hiff. Your pal, Le Hiff. Hello. How are you? What the devil do you care how I feel, you double-crossing rat? You gonna come across with the dough? Or do you want me to take it out of your hide and then refresh the cop's memory about Chandler's death? About Chandler's death? Yeah, you don't think they've forgotten, do you? Sure, 12 years is a long time, but not long enough. What do you want from me? My cut. 75,000 leaves of best lettuce. I'll be around for it at noon. You see, you have it there. Hello. 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 Refresh the cop's memory about Chandler's death. Got him, Himmel. Pontiac killed him. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Pontiac was a murderer. Now, I'm Pontiac. <laughs> well, what are you going to do now, Von Muller? In America, murder carries a death penalty. And you just escaped from that. You were rather clumsy the way you got rid of Pontiac's wife. You must be more careful how you deal with Lahif. He must be gotten rid of also. He is a very real danger to you, Von Muller. So you work out a plan quickly. You go out to the drugstore, purchase some rat poison and some liquor. When you get back, you mix a drink and wait for Lahif. It's noon now. And you look from the window across Central Park and watch the traffic creeping below and wait. You know it won't be long now. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Lehiff. Never mind the formalities, Pontiac. What's the idea of having a blinds drawn? Oh, you'll excuse it, I'm sure. I have a severe headache. I can imagine. Oh, uh, will you join me in a little drink? It's a long time since we met. Quit stolen, it, Pontiac. I came for my money. Hand it over. Oh, of course. Here you are. I have it ready for you. Count it. I won't bother to count it. It better be right. There's one dollar missing. Oh, I wouldn't take that chance. Hey, here's a brandy and soda. Come, let's drink to the future and let bygones be bygones. I wouldn't drink with you. All I want from you is what I have come and nothing else. Goodbye, Mr. Double Cross Pontiac. But wait, wait, please. <laughs> You're slipping, Ernst. Things aren't going exactly right, are they? You had him right in your net. And then he walked out with the bait. And now what? Pontiac double-crossed him. Maybe now he'll double-cross Pontiac. You. He didn't go to the police before because he wanted the money. But now, he may be on his way there now. You've got to do something. Quick, Ernst von Muller. Hurry. Look in the phone book. Then call. Travel agency. Good afternoon. My name is Pontiac, Frederick Pontiac. I want a seat on the plane to Argentina as soon as possible. I have to get there at once. It's very urgent. Yes, sir. Travel's pretty heavy, but I think we can arrange that. Do you have your visa? Visa? No. Get me one. 
That takes about one month, sir. Well, Mexico. Do I need a visa for Mexico? No, sir. Not if you're a citizen of the United States, are you? Of course I'm a citizen. Well, we can arrange that if your passport is in order. It's, uh, it's run out. They are sending me a new one. You should wait until you receive the new one. How long will it be before they send it to me? About a month as a rule. Can't I go without and they send it on to me? Mm, yes, that could be arranged, I think. I'll call you back when I've made inquiries, Mr. Pontiac. The wait is not long, but you fidget nervously through it. Then suddenly everything's all right again. They've reserved you a place on the Mexico plane. You'll have plenty of time to make it to the airport. And still the police haven't arrived. You hurry downstairs. Step up to pay your bill. Here, miss, I telephoned. You have my bill ready? Uh, yes, Mr. Pontiac. Twenty-seven fifty-five. Mm -hmm. You keep the change, miss. Oh, thank you, Mr. Pontiac. Um, those two men by the door, they're detectives. They were just asking about you. Detectives? Asking about me? Yes, sir. Is my taxi here yet? Uh, no, sir. Good evening, sir. Lahip has told the police. Yes, he's told them about Pontiac. But they won't stop you now. You've come too far to be caught. You only have to lose those detectives. And then Mexico City. You'll be free, able to start all over again without Pontiac's stupid involvement. Shouldn't be hard. There must be a way. You can't stay here to die for Pontiac's crime. Hurry, Ernst. Hurry. <laughs> These men are worse than your Gestapo, aren't they, Ernst? You try everything you can think of. Taking a taxi cab, switching cabs, doubling back, ducking into a movie theater and out a back entrance. But they're still there. You go down into the subway, try to lose them in the crowd. They're still following you. You can't get rid of them. And suddenly the panic begins to grow. It's almost time for the plane to leave. You've got to get to the airport. Maybe you can lose them there. Maybe... Frederick Pontiac? Yes, yes, that's my name. All right, sir, your reservation is in order. Now, if you'll leave your bag here, we'll check it. I'll just carry it with me. Oh, I'm afraid we'll have to weigh it anyway. You may as well leave it here. There'll be a short wait before you can board the plane. A wait? Yes, sir. We'll call you when it's ready. But you don't want to wait, do you, Ernst? There are those two men over there. You have to get on the plane and get away. But you know down in your heart that you never will. They're just waiting for that. As you step up to board the plane, they'll arrest you, Ernst. You know that. You're trapped, Ernst. You walk down to the washroom trying to think of something to do. But you can't. You know you're trapped. You escape from Germany in trial as a war criminal... And now you're going to have to stand trial as a murderer. Might have been a lot easier the other way. You know what they do to murderers here. You might have escaped that over there. Yes, that's it. Of course. And so, as you look up into the mirror and see the two men enter the washroom, you know, finally, what to do. Look, you. You men are following me. Yeah? What about it? And I know why. But you're wrong. You'll never hang me for that murder. Murder? What's he talking Wait. about? No. No, you don't trick me that way. You know what I'm talking about. But you will never convict me of a murder. Because you're after the wrong man. I am not Frederick Pontiac. No. No. No, no. You must believe me. I'm not Frederick Pontiac. Then who are you? I'm Ernst von Miller. Commander Ernst von Miller of the German Navy. I escaped from Germany as Frederick Pontiac. But Frederick Pontiac is dead. You... You don't believe me. But you must. Take me to the military authorities. The federal police. But not... Not for murder. I'm only an escaped prisoner of war. 
I can prove it, I'm sure. Yeah? Okay, brother. You just might be telling the truth. Maybe you'd better come along with us. The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, if your car is beginning to look and feel its age, did you know that down at your neighborhood signal station there's a veritable fountain of youthful ideas, a line of products for bringing back your car's sparkle and pep? For instance, Whiz Motor Rhythm actually dissolves carbon binder, thus freeing sticky valves and rings and giving you a cleaner motor that runs smoother and quieter and uses less gas. Then there's radiator cleaner and conditioner, It removes clogging sludge, rust, and scale from your radiator, putting your cooling system in shape for hottest summer driving. And your signal dealer's famous Venus Auto Polish cleans and waxes in one easy operation, bringing back new car luster and color while it protects the finish. But these are just three of your signal dealer's many car pepper-uppers. Next time you stop at one of the friendly stations displaying Signal's yellow and black circle sign, Why not look over the rest of his fine quality automotive accessories? Each plays a part in your Signal Gasoline Dealer's complete service to help your car run better, look better, and last longer. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, Ernst von Muller, you gave yourself up. Yes, you'll go back to Germany to stand trial as a war criminal. And when you read the newspapers about the fate of other commandants of German prison camps, you wonder if perhaps you didn't make the wrong choice. You might have been even more sure of it if you could have heard a certain telephone conversation the day you were captured. Miss Reagan, Mrs. Pointeck, this oh. is Reagan. Oh, the private detective I hired. Yes. I've got plenty to report, Mrs. Reagan. We tailed your husband like you asked us to. You were right. Oh, yes? Yeah, there was something screwy about him. He wasn't your husband at all. What? And we tailed him to the airport. He was just about to leave for Mexico. What? I'll never know why he didn't. That would have been the end of our case. But just before the plane was to leave, he surrendered himself to us. Who could it have been? He He was some German Navy officer, escaped and masquerading as your husband. Did he say anything about my husband? Yes. He said Mr. Pontiac died in his prison camp. So that's it. Yeah. Now, the thing I'll never be able to figure out was he kept talking about a murder. Said we wouldn't pin a murder rap on him because he wasn't Pontiac. You know what he was talking about? I have no idea. Uh, I haven't either. I thought the only thing Pontiac was mixed up in was that racetrack scandal back in 1933 when Lehef went to prison for poisoning a horse. The odds-on derby favorite. Lucky Chandler. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program directed by George W. Allen with tonight's story by James Sussex, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting that you let every traffic signal remind you that you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>